Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to our Bible study. Uh, you are watching a playback because we are experiencing some streaming challenges, but thank you for tuning in to this replay of our Bible study. Um, and thank you for tuning in to our collective consciousness prayer earlier. My name is Deacon Patrick Arthur Jackson, and you are tuned in to today's church. We are an all-accepting, Bible-based, Christ-centered, metaphysical church and kingdom is our brand of new thought. We have a universal call. Uh, to love God, love ourselves, and <clears throat> love everyone in that order. We believe that today's church is the place where all those three pieces come together. If you didn't join us for our collective consciousness prayer, we are going to get started with a moment of prayer. So I invite you, wherever you are, to center yourself in the power and presence of God as we prepare ourselves for our Bible study and conversation tonight. <sighs> God, we thank you for this time to come together as a corporate body of Christ to explore, study, and discuss your word. We bless the speakers tonight, the facilitators, the participants, those who will sit in conversation, those who may sit silently and ponder their own questions, those who contribute to the conversations, and those who will watch this replay as it streams on our social media channel. We hope that the words and the lessons that we learned tonight can not only be lived today, but continue to be applied to our lives each and every day following. It is in the name and through the power and the consciousness of Christ Jesus that we say it is so, so it is, and so we let it be. Amen and amen. Well, we are back, back, back again. Uh, we have been away uh, from our traditional Bible study, but if you have been tuned in um, on the Today's Church social media channels, or um, on the Kotech family Facebook group, you have seen uh, that we uh, were honored to have our Vicar General for the Church of the Everlasting Kingdom um, and Elder Designate uh, Daniel Rogers um, as facilitators for uh, the past several weeks during our Lenten consecration. So we blessed them as they return to their uh, Bible study for Beyond Church to talk tonight. Um, and we are back to our Bible study. Uh, we are continuing in the book of Matthew looks like we got halfway through before uh, consecration and we're on the back half. So if you are familiar with Matthew, it's one of the gospels uh, that kick off the New Testament uh, in the Bible. And it uh, tells the story of uh, Jesus from the perspective of Matthew, uh, because there are three other perspectives that we will continue to explore after Matthew. Uh, and we're in the back half, as I said, um, we are exploring some of the some of the signs uh, and some of the parables uh, that Jesus uh, spoke um, in this back half of Matthew. And uh, I promise I, I have some good old conversation to have with our, our facilitator, our loving shepherd mother, Deacon Renee Denar. How are you, uh, Shepherd? I was going to call you Deacon. I'm wonderful. I call you everything. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I am absolutely wonderful. This uh, consecration this year has definitely lifted me uh, to a place that I didn't even know existed. Uh, in the area of joy, I don't, I, I can't tell you uh, the joy that I have now and the growth that I uh, experienced through this, you know, realizing and learning that there were more than just miracles, that there was a difference with the miracle signs and wonders, because everything that I had already always seen was just a miracle. Mm. So <clears throat> to do that and then to <clears throat> actually come out of it, uh, still doing some of the things that I did during the fast and not stopping, which is something very unusual because in most years it's like I start counting down that last. <laughs> <laughs> to get into other things, but uh, I'm doing just I'm wonderful, just yeah. wonderful. That's good to hear. I I will say this. Uh, that I will I will be honest. Even for the people that's gonna watch this replay, uh, this was my hardest consecration yet. Um, I I just I had a lot of stuff going on in my in my regular life. It was hard for me to keep up. Um, but I did my best, and I will say I definitely um. I am more mindful about what I am taking in, in general, not just my, my diet, um, post-consecration, which I'm grateful for. Uh, 
But yeah, and I was grateful to know the difference between miracle signs and wonders. All of them can be miraculous, but only certain things were actual by definition of miracle. Or yeah. Or mm -hmm. It's it's really good, you know, to uh, to be a part of kingdom because there's so much to all, always learn. It just gives you just another boost every time you hear something. So uh, this has just been a wonderful experience. And here we are back with Matthew. Uh, and um, it took me a minute to find out where we were because it was kind of like we had been doing so much that uh, I hadn't thought about it until the, the end of last week. And I was like, okay, but where are we? In the book. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, where are we? What did we stop with? It took me a minute to come up with uh, the thought of how to find that out. So what I found out is that we stopped at chapter 11. So we're back uh, this week and we will... <clears throat> do uh, Matthew chapters 12 through 16. There are a couple of things that I thought about with Matthew. Um, you know, I know that Jesus had Matthew um, doing these things for him, but I just believe that it was because he knew that Matthew had been watching him long before he started following Jesus. He actually started when he was following Peter when he was following Simon to find out what he was up to as far as not paying his taxes. And through that, you know how we say that things just accident through the collision of Jesus with Peter to use the boat and then finding out that they weren't catching any fish. And with Matthew up on a mountain, spying on Simon, he was able to witness what Jesus could do. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really something to know that uh, Matthew had been inadvertently been following Jesus before he started following Jesus. Yeah, but right. uh, <laughs> so here we are today. Uh, and if you would, I, the quick scripture for uh Matthew chapter 12. Hmm. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Uh, so we are coming from uh, Matthew chapter 12, verses, uh, verse, excuse me, eight, uh, from the Kingdom Study Bible. Um, it's actually towards the end of, uh, in the middle of a, a phrase, if I'm remembering correctly from my reading earlier. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Sabbath being the holy day. <laughs> All right, for the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath. And we begin with the creation. We begin with knowing that we were created, that things happened according to God's plan. We were day what? What day were we? Well, the Testament shepherd on the first day was the heaven. Come on, somebody. I know you know what day we happened. I see, 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 Deacon Nigel just sipped her tea so she wouldn't have to answer. No, well, she's through sipping. <laughs> Come on, y'all. On the first day was the heaven and the earth. On the second day. Okay, I want to know. I, I don't, I didn't ask you all. <laughs> was it, was it day six? Was it day seven? Was it day six or day seven? I think it was day six. On the seventh day, he rested. So it must have been day six, huh? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but what happens is we learn uh, in this chapter. Um, and the, the, the verse that, if you can see that, you can see that I have your I am a good tree. I am a good tree. Because that, that is the thing that we were. We were planted. There was a seed. We grew from that seed. 
into a truth. The growth of us, how we grew in that time, how we became who we are and what is going on. And then to know to continue in that, to continue in the path that we have as far as, let me give me some water. I'm just exposed. I don't know why. And continuing in that, and continuing what we were created to do with the purpose that we have, with whatever our purpose is. Each one of us has one. And knowing what that is allowed us to continue in that and to be able to grow and come to a decision as to what we were going to do and how we were going to be. So for me, uh, knowing that what I'm doing is branching out from being that good truth branching out and becoming all that I can become and even being somewhat of a shade for other people, allowing them to come and rest there and allow me to share whatever it is that I do. Silence. Shepard, I have a question. The the Bible study sheet I have has different points on it for the first one. Okay. Let's see. Did I send the right? Okay. Here I am. I, Welcome I, to my world. Well, I have the rest of the, the rest of the chapters on, on that page, on my page are the same. Mm -hmm. It's this first one. Okay. Let's see. Let me see. Okay. Let me check something. That's why y'all sitting there looking at me like that. Well, yeah, I have. Oh, I take that back. Maybe not all of them are matched, but the I grow like is the same for me. The scripture is the same. Okay, you have. Okay, I I see what you have. You have greater skill. Mm -hmm. You have greater skill. Okay, well, you go ahead with that because I'm. I can see that you're prepared. I was adjusting my head to a natural form. <laughs> uh, if you stop sharing, I'll share mine. Now, it okay. Has, it has All right, we can do that. So just ignore my notes. Can y'all see that? Okay. her um, is here. See, I was trying to, I was trying to change the testimony. Um, so, so uh, Shepard, what I got from this, uh, and I, I put some notes on the side, just to remind me of where the, the other two points were uh, in the chapter, uh, was um, that for me, it was a reminder um, that in any situation, like God is God is the greatest thing, and and Jesus reminds us that with what He says um, with all of these different different parable parables, uh, excuse me, not parables, but um, reference points. He says, especially my favorite one was verse uh, the verse thirty nine through forty one. Mm -hmm. Let me pull it up. Where is it? Right there. Um, uh, but Jesus replied, only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a mi miraculous sign, but the only sign I will give them is the sign of the prophet Jonah. So referring back to Jonah in the whale, for Joni Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights. So will the son of man be in the heart, the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Um, and the people of Nineveh will stand up against this generation on judgment day and condemn it, for they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. Um, so he was, for me, it was really showing like, even in, 
even in people's doubts, the goodness is here, the, the greatness is here. I mean, even even in the presence of their doubtness, they're doubting and they're naysaying um, that I can lean into that that greatness um, for me. Uh, and we see it again uh, later on, actually just a, a verse down when he, um, he goes back and refers to um, the Queen of Sheba and Solomon um, in verse 32, he says, the Queen of Sheba will also stand up against this generation on judgment day and condemn it for she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but she refused to listen once again. Um, and it also made me wonder, because I know we learn um, that typically uh, the feminine characters um, in the Bible represent um, various emotional qualities and um, the masculine characters represent um, more of the uh, more of the thinking nature. And so it made me think it made me the nurturing, yeah. Nurturing, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it made me think, uh, like what, as Jesus was saying <laughs> that, like what, why specifically did he he choose the the story of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and like what was his intention? Um, what was his intention? But besides, like connecting that parallel back, um, back to the Old Testament, I was just I was just curious. That was my question for tonight. I was curious. Okay. Was well. Um, let's look at that. Um, there is a nurturing in it because of the way that she had the compassion for what she was doing for her people and how she was following Solomon. Sometimes strength, sometimes when we look at strength, we don't think of it as nurturing. Hmm. Sometimes we we take some of the words that we use sometimes, we don't really put them with nurturing, but it takes strength to nurture. When you think of strength, you think masculine. Hmm. When you think of uh, wisdom, a lot of times you think. Be respectful. Yes, thank you, Kenny. Oh, by the way, if you if you real if you real, can you wake me at the back? I take my dog to the bathroom. We'll be right here, Kenny. We'll be right here. Thank you. So, a lot of times, I think that uh, when we think of strong women, we take them out of the picture of nurture because of the word strength. But uh, it takes strength to nurture. It takes a lot of strength sometimes for, you think about uh, with our mothers, our aunts, people like that, who were actually nurturing us, but were very firm. So I think that when we think of uh, when we think of the Queen of Sheba and her story, we do think of a more of a masculine person because of her actions. But at the same time, those actions, we're into that both and mm -hmm. instead of either or mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did anyone Did else? that make sense? Okay. All right. So I don't know how I did that there, that uh, how I got two different things. I've got a new computer and I'm working with it. So it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why teamwork makes a dream work. Absolutely. So I've got the same for the other ones, right? Uh, yeah. No. Because I think that uh, check. Oh, I'm trying to scroll it down. <laughs> We'll I think that points. chapter 15 is different too. The we'll, points are different. We'll work through it. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on. Uh, I grow like in Matthew chapter 13. Mm -hmm. Deacon Cheryl, would you read that scripture for us? All right. 
But he said, no, because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may also pull up the wheat. Matthew chapter 13, verse 29 from the Kingdom Study Bible. And we know that story very well. And the understanding of it is making sure that uh, we let them grow all the way up so we make sure we don't pull up the wheat with the seed, with the um, with the weeds. So I grow like one of the things that happened is we were seeds. God planted us. God brought us here. And we were seeds in the ground, making it possible for us to grow into whatever it is we desire to be. And in a way that allowed us to become whomever we desire to be, making sure that no matter what, we could grow, but we had to make sure it was the right seed. We had to make sure that we were doing that. And as we grow, there are always going to be some weeds in it. There are going to be some weeds around us. We have weeds around us all the time. Mm. But at the same time, we outgrow them and they are recognizable. You can recognize them. Sometimes it doesn't take too much either because of maybe sometimes like what they say or what they do or how they feel about a certain thing that allows you to know, okay, this 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 isn't growing with me. This isn't something that is growing with me. This is something that is in the ground next to me that's growing up beside me, but this is not the thing for me. And the same thing, I grow like a mustard seed. As small as the mustard seed is, it grows up into, I saw when the first time I saw a big mustard tree, I couldn't believe it. Because I never thought of anything but the actual mustard seed. Because when I was growing up, it was a thing to have a bracelet with a mustard seed in it or a necklace with a mustard seed. But I never had taken it to the point of realizing, even though I had heard, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, it just hadn't come together yet. But when I saw that first picture of the tree, it was kind of the same thing like with uh, an acorn. Mm. An acorn becomes a mighty oak tree. And when you look at it on the ground, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that's what it's gonna be, but that is what it is. It makes me think so we grow into the things that we are meant to be. Even though some of that growth sometimes gets kind of mixed up, things happen. Yeah. But we also know that those things happen, those things that are happening are taking us through that growth period and allowing us to be the growth that we need to be. The yeast in the dough, the yeast is what makes the, the dough grow. You know, if this is like leavened bread. It's like the unleavened bread doesn't have the leaven in it, but the yeast in the dough allows it to grow. And listen, y'all know about my, I always say that I can't cook, but I had to stop saying I can't cook because I can cook. But I have done something where I thought that I was going to make my grandmother's biscuits and I forgot the yeast. Hmm. And let me tell you something, that looked like a little hard cooking because it didn't grow. So in growing, we have these examples of growing. We have the seed in the ground. We have the mustard seed and we have the yeast because we know that all of these things allow things to grow and stretch and be. So it helps us a lot to know that we grow like this. And this is one of the things that happened to us even in our, um, even in our consecration. There was a lot of growth in our consecration because we did a lot more this year, I think, than we normally do uh, as far as uh, classes and experiences and 
and testimonies and all of the things that brought us to wherever we landed at the end of consecration. So that that was a the listen, consecration was a seed. Your your studying is a seed. Your your meditation is a seed. Your stillness and and movement is a seed. All of these things are seeds that help us to grow. Oh boy, but this next one, this chapter fourteen. Oh John, I tell you, <laughs> Najera, would you read the? The uh, scripture for 14. His head was brought in on a, on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. Matthew 14, 11, Kingdom Study Bible. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Don't let it go to you. And, you know, we ask for some things sometimes because you we all know that John is the one that brought kingdom out in the beginning. It was John who was the leader, uh, the spiritual leader for kingdom, preparing us for the coming of Jesus. So when Jesus came, that actually meant that John had done what he needed to do and that Jesus could take it from there. John baptizing Jesus gave him the authority to become the leader of kingdom. However, John was not quite ready to give it up. So John still had his disciples. He had people following him, which kind of took him from the head of the movement to head it. And when you think about a person that is being heady, you're thinking about somebody that's kind of arrogant, that has a kind of like a little ego, an, an issue of not giving up things. Okay, uh, I can remember getting a position at my job that had belonged to someone else. And every time I got ready to do something, they showed up to try to, of course, they said they were helping me, but they were actually smothering me, you know? And it was a thing where, well, yeah, I know that you're trying to do it like this, but you see, when I had the job, I did this, this, and this, which is fine. But since you don't have the job anymore, can you move on? Well, John could not move on. Couldn't let it go. He could not let it go. I mean, he was just determined to have something to say. And then he had the nerve to start talking about Herod's business. Now, Herod wasn't really bothering John. Herod had his own life. And here's John, who is now going to discuss his marriage and his life and all of that. Well, the consequences of that is beheading. The one thing that is causing you to be this way is your head. So let's take that off and fix that. John could not let go, even though like, like he and Jesus were cousins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. He and Jesus were cousins. Now, me and my cousins, we all get along because each of us has a lane that we in and nobody's trying to get into anybody else's lane everybody is you know just going listen I've got cousins that I talk to once or twice a year I've got cousins I talk to almost every day I've got cousins that I don't even know where they are but the thing about it is however it is 
I'm over here in my business. So whatever is going on over there, I don't know. Uh, I don't have anything to uh, offer for that. I think it's a good idea that everybody lives their own life and know when the time is up. Know when it's time to cut the lights off and go. It doesn't always have to be that the host has got to say to you, look, I'm going to bed, so y'all got to go. It, it, it doesn't always have to be. I don't know where you're going, but you got to get out of here. It's good to know when it's time to let it go. It's good to know when it's time to move on. Don't let whatever is happening in your life go to your head. Because once you let it go to your head, then you're no longer functioning in that position. You're not helping yourself. And you're not helping anyone else because you're off into left field with that. You're not even concentrating on what the issue is, what your position is or anything because you off doing this. John was too concerned about what other people were doing. His thing was in the beginning to start the movement of kingdom and to prepare the people for Jesus' coming. But he didn't do that. And since he didn't do that, his head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother. Let's keep our heads, everybody. Don't let things go to your head. Hmm. Keep your head so it won't be on a platter. It doesn't have to be literal, but it can still get on that platter somehow. I'm curious. Anybody have anything for that? I was going to say, Shepard, get out my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I literally was about to ask that. I'm curious. Have uh, I have a story to share before I share my story. Has anyone, has anyone had a moment where you have um, gotten bigger than your britches? Your head's been a little bit too big for your hat? I'm sure I, I don't I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm sure I've had numerous situations, experiences <laughs> where that has been the case. And um, it's a lesson well learned. And and oftentimes I wish that I had had the foresight, but it turns in hindsight mm -hmm. when I'm when because when 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 I am when I have had those beheading situations, it's been very humiliating. <laughs> and embarrassing <laughs> so <laughs> yeah so I've had those situations I I hear I hear that Deacon Cheryl and I I, I affirm and agree that I I have been there um in some in some parts of my life I'm still learning those things um I've always been a very adaptable person so like I, I'm a quick study and so my my quickness often makes me feel like my head should be big and so I, I have often gotten my head cut off in, in many moments. And I find myself, as I've gotten older and wiser and learned a little bit, um, I will stop in moments sometimes and be like, am I, am I like being a little too headstrong right now? Let me just, Patty, just sit here for a second. Just, sometimes I'll just say, just sit there and shut up, Patty. Just, just sit. And if you and need to say something, you can say something. I'm saying to myself, you know, you need to go and sit down somewhere. Okay, go sit. Sometimes I say it out loud. I will literally, Patrick, go sit down. Just, I'm, oh, I'm go over here. I'm sit gonna sit down, y'all. I'm, I'm gonna just sit right over there, y'all. Just let me know. No, you know, you know, from the movie, sometimes I just go to myself. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. And since. Since we're living in a time where we really don't have to worry about uh, somebody actually bringing our heads to somebody on the planet, but we know that we know when it's that time. We recognize it. The one thing that I know uh, with being uh, in kingdom, it hits us right. It we see it. We see it and say, oops, wait a minute. Mm. Hold up, like you say, Cheryl, hold up. Hold up. 
Oh, that made me think of my stepson. I, I hear him boy and James would get ready to reprimand him. He'd go, hold up, daddy, hold up, daddy. Oh, baby, that's the wrong thing. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. Oh, what about you, Najla? Well, at first thought, I would say no, but I know I'm not being truthful. <laughs> I know I'm not being truthful with myself. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have experienced that. And then yeah. you get in, get embarrassed and just kind of shrink down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had that. I've had that situation where I really did want to be just into the ground away invisible like yes. this, this, wait you want to ask people what you can see me <laughs> actually you want help no i'm good i don't want help no more don't no thank you <laughs> no I, thank you i, I no. remember um i'm gonna tell this story real quick and i know we got two more chapters before um and i know there's a meeting at eight mm -hmm. uh but in in college we um the some of the section leaders for the band decided that uh, our band director was not doing a good job at creating the drills and the movements and, and writing the music and that we thought that we could do a better job. So we said, great, y'all can write, y'all can write the whole show for next week. Oh and, my God. And when I say the whole show, we didn't keep, he didn't make, he didn't let us keep anything. So we had to make a new dance routine. The, uh, the people who could write music had to write all the songs for the entire show. The, uh, the dancers had to make. Okay. I'll, I'll back. Thank you, Kenny. And welcome back. Um, and I learned in that moment, one, we did, we did realize who were the skilled people in the sec amongst the section leaders, which was a nice thing, but I learned, I was like, oh, it's more to it than just, oh, okay. It, now, long story short, it ended up being fine because it was a group effort, but when yeah. I, did, I said, I said, I will never, ever, 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 ever do this again. <laughs> this is not my gifting. I was like, this is, this is stressful. How do people do this? Yeah, because when you're looking at it, when you're sitting there watching it happen, it just seems like it's so simple. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could do that. Okay, well, do it. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, let's go on. Uh, a deeper look. A deeper look. Mm. Yeah, I had some different points, but I don't know if God knows his God provides. Um, and I and Shepard, I was when I was reading, I couldn't I I couldn't find a connection with the points. So maybe your points might be right. Well, let me go and share my screen now. Let's see. Okay. Let's go back. Well, it is a, you know, a team thing, so. All right. So in mine, I have, uh, well, we can start with the uh, scripture, uh, but the things that came out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these things defile them. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that defile them. That, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it was a typo there. And these are the things that defile them. Okay. So we take a deeper look at traditions because we know that one of the big traditions was uh, before you eat your wash your hands. And the thing was that they were looking at the disciples who did not wash their hands before they ate and they were trying to make this be um, an issue. You know, that uh, this is something that is an outward thing. The things that we're dealing with come from inside of us. There's nothing external that we're doing that can supersede what is inside. Mm. And to believe that just because this is what people 
Laura, already always done. What is the purpose? What what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? What does it do? What is the purpose of it? Why are we doing this? Why is it such a big deal? Did it do something to you? Did it do something to the food? I mean, what did it do? Be more concerned about the truth. Hmm. Be more concerned about that. The thing about it is when we come, when we think sometimes of things that, well, we've always done it that way. But does that mean because you've always done it that way that you always have to do it that way? How do we get the greater works if we always do it that way? Hmm. That would mean we would all still be running around in the old donkeys. You know, sometimes it can go too far with a tradition. Mm -hmm. That's like even in your family, there are some traditions that I, I can remember just growing up. A tradition with us was supposed to be a family meal on Sunday at my great-grandmother's house. But to me, it was a family school class because we couldn't even say anything without somebody correcting us, which is okay at any point. But at some point, can I just eat the chicken? Do I have to make a speech? Do I have to say a something? Do I have to rehash what happened in school or whatever I do? won or did win in order to eat this chicken. I mean, really. So sometimes when we look at traditions, we need to know uh, how we're thinking about them. Is it something that really does something on the inside of us or is something that's on the outside of us? Because truth be told, traditions don't always work all the time. You know, the KKK had a tradition of marching, marching up and down the street, the downtown St. Petersburg. That was their tradition. So does that mean we should still be seeing them uh, do that? No. Things change. Mm -hmm. Traditions are good in some instances and in other, and in other instances, it's time to let them go, especially when they're not coming from the inside out. When they're coming from the outside in, that's a different thing. You're doing this because of maybe something you saw on TV. But what is it doing for you? What is it? How is it preparing you and keeping you in your purpose? Cheryl, I see you coming off mute. I um. I was particularly, the, the part that stood out for me in this um, chapter was the fact that Jesus drew their attention to the law of honor your father and your mother mm. and how basic that is and how much of a tradition that should be and how easily we violate that tradition. And so he compared, I think that, I think it's really um, something that he compared a moral value um, to something so simple as washing hands. Yes. You know, I, I, it, I think that the contrast between the two was really something. And I think that, um, you know, like, I think this was in a sense a beheading. <laughs> 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 for the yeah. Pharisees and the teachers, you know, because he took he took a simple law from um the basics and compared it to what they were what they were chalking up to something really a big bad, deal. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, making a big deal out of the washing mm -hmm. of the hands. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and then he just broke down how they dishonor the mother, the father and the mother and violate that tradition and law. 
you know, it's uh, the one thing that I that I'm really enjoying in Matthew is what I would call the comebacks of Jesus. Mm. Mm. He was sharp. When the things that they would throw at him and he could just catch it with one hand and put it down here and talk and just make everybody just say, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That was that was truly a gift. That was truly a gift. And then uh, what happens is once that whole argument goes on and on after a while and you are shut up with the truth, then all that that you were saying just goes out the window and you lose. And that person, that whole situation goes in another direction. But again, uh, Jesus was really dis was dealing with internal feelings. And not some what you see outside thing. So it makes that difference. All the time. All the time. So here we are. Anybody else got any comments? Kenneth, I see your hand. Um, what's C-O-T-E-K means? Okay. Church of the Everlasting Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Church in the coming of kingdom. Church of, Church of the everlasting vacation. Church kingdom. Kingdom. Why, why, Dicker Patrick? Yes, that's right. It's like a big. It's the big club that we are a part of. So Kotek is like the big club. It's like all the YMCA. That is C O T E. K mm -hmm. means yes, Church of the Everlasting Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's the headquarters, and we are like one of the one of the regular locations under Kotech. Okay, so let's move on. Shepard, do you want <laughs> to do you do you want to save this one, or do you want to try to get it done? Do you want to, what time is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we can, uh, that makes sense. We better, yeah, we better wrap this up because we do have a, a, another thing happening at eight o'clock. I forgot about that. Okay. Well, this, is our, this is our portion in Bible study where we move into our giving ministry. There are many ways to give at Today's Church. You can find those at our website, todayschurchtampabay.com. Uh, the one that I will I will tell you tonight is to give on Givelify. It is a giving app um, that many spiritual organizations use. So please look for us there. We're also on Zelle, today's church, uh, Tampa Bay at gmail.com. Uh, so in that mindfulness of giving, I invite you, um, if you're giving digitally, to uh, hold your phone in your hand and repeat our prosperity affirmation that I've been working on trying to fully memorize. So I'm going to try it. Here we go. Uh, prosperity is a fountain that flows from our health to harmonious relationships to our wealth. Prosperity is always flowing. Less is blocking. I remember. I remember. Uh, so I remove. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. We remove all barriers, blocks, and boulders. There it is, and allow the flow of prosperity, uh, allow the the flow of our individual, corporate, and collective prosperity. It is so, and so it is, and so we let it be. Amen. And amen. amen. Um, a few quick announcements, but before I jump to announcements, uh, Deacon Najib, I just want to be clear about the um assignment for next week. Uh, we're going to start with chapter 16. So we'll do 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. A few announcements. Before you go, talk to Dr. Pori, I said good morning. I will. You can tell him when you see him on the Daily Download tomorrow, Kenneth. 
Uh, a few announcements for those who are watching. I'm, I'm be, I might be gone. Okay, that's all right. Let me finish the announcements, okay, bud? Uh, a few announcements for those who are watching this replay. It is the month of April. We are moving into a new name of God, Jehovah Jireh, uh, the provider, the God who provides. So we hope that you will join us for one of our three services on Sundays, our 730 virtual service on Facebook and YouTube, our 1030 uh, St. Petersburg in-person service at the studio at 620. We hope that you will join us at our new location or our 230 afternoon service in Tampa, which is um, at 3. 501 North 26th Street um, in East Tampa. We um, also have our today's women virtual uh, gathering is uh, returning this Saturday. So please join us right here in the same Zoom space. The same Zoom information that you use to log in for Bible study will work for that gathering. Um, so be sure if you are um, uh, an individual who identifies as a woman, we invite Five, you. One, one, those, let me, let me like finish the announcements. Let me finish the announcements, all right? Uh, we invite you to uh, to come to that gathering. A is April is for anniversary. We're celebrating all the many anniversaries of today's church. Um, seven years of today's church being in existence, specifically our Tampa uh, flagship headquarter location. Um, six years of virtual membership, five years of our St. Petersburg location, and many more things to celebrate as well in April. So we hope that you will join us for some of those celebrations virtually, physically, um, and speaking of celebrations, we are moving and grooving towards June um, as we celebrate the elevation um, of, of some of our ministerial staff, including our very own Dr. Jones, uh, who, who will be um, who will be uh, moving up as a bishop. So we are excited to celebrate that. You can learn more information about that. Uh, Church of the Everlasting Kingdom Congress at Cotec, uh, C O T E K Increase dot org. Uh, those are all the big announcements, but you know what I'm going to say. Sign up for our constant contact email list. Although it's called constant contact, we won't constantly contact you. Uh, so we thank you so much, and we will move to our... Somebody, somebody just came on. Yes, we know, Kenneth. That's Dr. Jones. It's all good. All is well. Thank you, friend. Um, so we will move to our benediction. Here at today's church, we have a call to love, love God, love ourselves and uh, love everyone in that order. Um, that love doesn't start with us, it starts with God. So we invite you uh, to center yourself as we move to close. And I invite you to uh, affirm this benediction with me. God is love. I love God. I am learning to love myself. And I am sharing this love with everyone else, with everyone. It is in the name and through the power and the consciousness of Christ Jesus that it is so, so it is, and so we let it be. Amen and amen. We will see you next week uh, right here on our um, Bible study page. Please join us in the Zoom room. We're trying something new. I'm trying something new this just for this month of April to try it. This will be a replay that happens on Thursdays at the same time. But if you want to be in the conversation, you got to join the Zoom. Uh, so be sure to join us for that conversation. We will see you next Wednesday. Uh, Deacon Najda will be co-facilitating with Shepherd Mother. And we will be uh, continuing in the book of Matthew. Until